We're going to get into that in just a minute. Uh, we're going to practice some of them. Make up your own. Generate them yourself. Don't force your will on others. Don't interfere. Use your intuition. Sometimes it's not good to heal somebody. Sometimes they need what they have. Death is not the big boogie boo, the big monster that you're trying to avoid. The point of being here isn't to feel good and be happy and make money and drink beer. The point of being here is to grow. And sometimes growth, almost all the time, growth comes from hardship. Growth comes from pain. Growth comes from, from being pressed, being challenged. Things are demanded of us. It's usually when we're feeling like we need to change something. You know, now we're getting to growth. When you're you know, fat and happy and everything is just going along perfectly, why would you say, I need to change something? You don't want to change anything. You say, oh, I hope nothing changes. You know, this is perfect the way it is. And you're dead in the water at that point. You're not, no longer growing. You're no longer changing. So stress is good in that sense. It pushes us to make decisions. And sometimes illness is part of that stress. And sometimes it's just part of the feedback system. You know, sometimes it's part of the rule set. If you happen to have spent five years working uh, in the asbestos industry, installing asbestos ceilings in schoolhouses, you know, in the 1950s or something, well, the rule set says your probability of lung cancer is going to be high. You see, that's just a rule set problem. So that's not something you necessarily create or not create. Of course, if that probability is high and you never get it, even though it, maybe the probability goes up to 99%, but it never bothers you, that's probably because you have a good attitude and you're changing the probability. You see, you're modifying that probability to where it's less likely to apply to you. So it's not always something you've done. Oh, I'm paying the price. This is karma. You know, I'm ill because, you know, I need to be nicer or something. You know, sometimes you're, you are uh, getting a lesson and that lesson may be of any sort growing lesson. It could be that you're getting a lesson in, in uh, humility. It could be you're getting a lesson in, in uh, letting go of ego. Sometimes when people get to a point where they realize that they're very ill and that they're dying, often suddenly their reality grows tremendously. Instead of being focused in that tiny little space of everyday problems and yada, 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 and who's doing what to who, and you know, all the soap opera stuff that's going on just kind of, it's not important anymore falls apart and they get a much better look at reality. Suddenly reality, you know, is deeper, full of quality, bigger pictures. Well, that all by itself is a very important opportunity. And you say, yeah, but they're going to die, you know. Well, they've learned something important. So that gets them cumulative, you know, when they do the next chapter. Well, there it is. They've learned something. Well, maybe that that uh, facing death experience can be a very educational experience. So the idea that, oh, somebody's going to die, we should fix that. You know, we should take it away. Don't be too quick to manipulate the path that other people are on, even if you think it's for their benefit. You'll know when you work, if, if what you try to do keeps being rebuffed, then you'll know that it's probably you ought to just leave it alone. Sometimes you'll know that even before you work. You just get the idea, you get the feeling when that, when that case comes to you, you just kind of get the feeling that, you know, it's just the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> so anyway, just practice will do that. But it's generally not good. The better you get, the easier it is to know. In the beginning, when you're just learning, when I say go out and practice healing because you'll, you'll get data, don't worry too much about are you messing with somebody else's path. Just go do it. You're not that powerful that you're really going to mess with anybody's path anyway. You just go do it. For, you know, forget about it. Because if somebody else really needs that, you're not going to overwhelm them. You're not going to slam dump them into something that they don't want. Your pushes are more gentle. And if they're accepting of it, then yes, you know, it, can, it can be powerful for them if they're accepting of it. If they're not, it probably won't affect them very much. Because you actually have to overcome their their own path. You have to overcome their history, their, their probability, their wants and needs. And that takes, a lot of, that takes a lot of force. Now you can do that. Obviously it's, sometimes it's a, it's a push versus pull situation. If you, if you have your mindset that something's going to be this way and there's somebody else has their mindset that it's not, 
Okay, then both of you are trying to move the probability in opposite directions. What happens? Well, it's you know like anything else. You know, the, if, whoever's got the biggest push, you know, moves it the most. So yes, it's not always, you know, it's. It, it, it's not always independent. You're not the only actor in the world. There are other people who have intents that are interacting with your intents. So if somebody has an intent that this is their time to go, that they're going, you know, that they're, this, is their, this is their illness, this is their death, it's their time to go. If they have, that's their intent, you, can, you could, if you were powerful enough, you know, slam that intent and make them stay anyway, but that wouldn't be nice. And if you were powerful enough to do that, you wouldn't do it because that means you would have grown up enough to have gotten that power to know that you shouldn't do that. If you're not all that powerful, then it really doesn't make any difference if you sometimes push on things that shouldn't be pushed on because you're not going to, you're not really going to damage anything. Your energy just will be refused. You'll be trying to do it and nothing will happen. It'll just be refused. So get sensitive to being, you know, to that sort of thing. Don't, don't make it a, I'm going to make this my way no matter what. You know, I'm going to do this thing. Be sensitive. Sometimes you should just let it go. You don't have to do this, do this thing. It's not always my way or you know, win. And death is not always a big, a big problem. Sometimes that's a good solution. Because you're going to just start up another one and now you'll be a little smarter because what you learned through that death process. You'll be a little brighter. Don't take that away. Don't make that death process a fearful, a fearful, non-thinking, denial process. You see, now you rob, you know, now you rob the person of the opportunity to learn something from it. Make that a, you know, a growing process, a terrific process, a time for bigger picture. So you want to encourage that view rather than, you know, sobbing and, and miserable about it kind of makes it harder for a person to learn. So you need a different attitude, a good attitude toward death. So use your intuition about what you should do and how you should do it. When you're working with colors, sometimes you'll be healing and you'll put that white light on them and it'll just come to you that that would be really better if that was a light blue light or if that was a green light or if it was this way or that way. Do it. Follow your intuition. Don't say, well, the tool I use is a white light. You know, so that's what I'll do. Be open. Let your tools change for the situation. Let's the way you use them change for the situation. 